There, I see you. Hey there, guys. How's it going? What's up, Shield Toshi? Thanks for hosting. Yeah, thanks for thanks for joining and hosting yourselves and uh, giving us some of your time. I really am uh, appreciative of you guys taking the time to sync up with us and, and show some uh, some cool stuff with Python. Yeah, yeah Tanim's usually got some cool stuff. I believe it. Let's see. There was a bandwidth issue. Gosh, you know, maybe yeah. Zoom yeah. take over Discord, the company. That would be awesome. <laughs> well, I'll talk to Sergey. See what he thinks. Let me just I blast that one more ping. Sounds good. Hmm. Oh, uh, I guess uh, the guy from. Norfolk joins us. Where does pairprogram.com live on planet Earth? Uh, East Coast, West Coast? Yeah, we're like East Coast. yeah, we're in the East Coast right now. Which state? I mean, like, where exactly? Uh, Massachusetts for me. Okay. Yeah, Rhode Island cool. for me. Oh, neat. Uh, How about uh, yourself? Uh, Livermore, California, Bay Area. Nice. Yeah, a bunch of the people that I work with are based out of California, and I'm always jealous of the weather that they tell me that they're having and compared to yeah. what we have. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the Bay Area, too. It's lovely. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, can so people that, hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, All right, good. Uh, let's see here. I don't, I don't see me here. If, if I click video, yeah. turn on here. Turn mm. there. Okay, there I am. Sweet. I see you. <laughs> Well, now I, now that everyone's awake. <laughs> if anything, that got the blood flowing. I feel uh, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Was that you, Ellie? That is me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh, 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 was that me with the with the sound? No. <laughs> <laughs> Unless if there's another person here, that we. That was Remojo scientific. It's not very scientific <laughs> with his audio. <laughs> it happens. <sighs> we usually give people the first 10 minutes to, to gather. Uh, usually we figure out things like we sent out the wrong invite link and stuff like that. Thanks for the <laughs> QA, Robert. Uh, I went back through the channels and posted uh, a, a more up-to-date link. Hopefully that'll work out. Ooh, I should tweet it too. Ooh, would that, is that bad? No, that's probably cool. Yeah. Uh, the video. This is, um, you know, if you video put it on... It is just popping in and out. Uh, this is one of those comments where I'm just going to say, I wish this were Zoom. <laughs> All right. But oh well. Yeah, we need a fully boosted server, apparently. Yeah, Zoom oh, so next what, month. What is that? Uh, I think they, they cap your, your frames per second and various other bits of bandwidth uh, when you have a like a baseline server yeah i think we we have 60 fps and 1080p uh because we boosted a couple times but 
if there's more that's needed, I'm happy to see if we can uh, get that situated before we start. I don't know. What was, what was popping video. in for you, Tanim? Video's just not going to happen. So it is what it is. All right. Zoom again next month. Sounds okay, good. I'll hold you <laughs> We'll give it like five, six more minutes. We usually wait till 10 minutes after the hour because people maybe just noticed their notification. What are you doing, Robert? What does that look like? It looks like a volume knob. Yeah, it is. It's awesome. It's a, it's a USB volume knob. You just plug it into your computer. And you have a remote volume control. That's pretty sweet. I didn't know if it was going to work. They didn't say anything about Linux. So, so I plugged it into my Mac, and it worked terrific. And then I plugged it into my Linux system, and it worked terrific. It's like uh, 22 bucks. Oh. You didn't have to like install a whole bunch of drivers nope. and dependencies? Well, that's pretty good. It just knows where it connects into the system. Nice. Nice to see some more people joining in here. Um, I wonder if on the agenda, if we have some introductions to do, but uh, I'll, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Ali. Um, myself and Spacetime here, we kind of began this community focused around pair programming and getting people to feel more comfortable with, you know, programming with another person, uh, working through issues together, even having mock interviews and things of that nature. Uh, Myself, I have been a software engineer for the past close to five years, and from there, I've gone from an intern to a tech lead of a team that we work at. Uh, it's a startup based in Silicon Valley, but um, it's really great to see all of the faces here, and uh, I'm really happy that through you know the internet, we're able to congregate and have something as special as this. So thank you so much for taking the time. I'll kick it over to Spacetime as he is the co-founder of peerprogram.com. Hey, yeah, um, I'll probably keep it pretty brief only because my wife is sleeping, but um, don't want to don't want to wake her up. But anyways, uh, yeah, so myself and Shil Toshi, we, we've worked together for a number of years. Um, I'm about five years experience as well. So um, yeah, I have a background in SRE, software engineering, um, so yeah, just super excited, really enjoy pair programming with other people and, uh, happy to hear from you all. Uh, hello. I'm new here. Uh, uh, sorry, I've got social anxiety. You're gonna have to let my brain reboot. <laughs> um, I, I, I joined this community about less than a month ago, about maybe two weeks, not even. Um, and nice to informally meet you all. Um, I just graduated a coding boot camp a little bit back, and now I've just been trying to navigate my the space around here and hoping for the best. That's really all I have to say. I'm sorry my introduction sucks. No, no, no biggie. It's it's nice to meet you, and um, hopefully you'll get to learn a lot tonight and uh, in the future with the pair program community because there's a lot of experience here and a lot of smart folks. So, welcome. Well, all I know is that you all are probably smarter than me, so <laughs> I look forward to uh, learning from you all. And if anyone learns something from me, then it's 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 a miracle. Pray, praise Jesus. <laughs> awesome intro i like that your uh your avatar matches your intro it's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> thanks it's it's nothing but sheer panic if i don't sound like i'm panicking i'm still panicking nice well usually when people think they're not as smart as every everyone they're usually smarter than everyone so i got my eye on you <laughs> uh hey i'm Fremantic. i'm the host of this sacfi thing 
Uh, some people call me Woody in real life, but Frymatic's more fun on Discord. Um, yeah, I've been coding for not too many years, really. I've been do in the Silicon Valley scene for quite some time, but uh, made the transition to engineering in 2019. Got to know Dr. Flask there uh, through a project early 2020. I took over the SACPI thing. Um, I'll give a bit more of an intro. Uh, we got a few more minutes before we get started, but just thought I'd say hi. If anyone else wants to chime in, we'll, uh, I'm answering a few more messages on Meetup because apparently not everyone got the updates. Uh, hi, I'm Dr. Flask. Uh, I, uh, um, I've been in programming a while uh, and in hardware hacking. Um, and so I work in uh, software engineering in Python. Um, and um, yeah, I, I like pair programming too. Oh, and I've got a cool new toy. I got a cool new toy just before the meeting started. <laughs> nice. It's nice to meet you. Hey, I'm Coin Juice. Um, this is my first time coming meeting everybody. I just uh, found this through Meetup. Um, I've I just known how to program for a while, but I haven't uh, dedicated myself to making a portfolio to present for a job. So um, having like a peer programming would is something that sounds ideal for me. Um, and I'm also in the Silicon Valley. Um, yeah, so just nice to meet you all, y'all. Awesome. Hey. Nice to meet you, too. Um, I'm Dio. It's uh, Diogenes. I kinda, that's kind of the name that I use on Discord a lot. Um, but you can just call me Keith. Um, uh, and uh, I've I I, th I don't know how I was like fourth or something here when you guys in invited me, but um yeah I I remember yeah. the invite on Twitter that was kind of interesting and I really like peer programming because um I was introduced to it kind of um during boot camp same boot camp that uh, Kai came from um and I started learning more about it um. Dave Farley is really cool. Uh, he runs this channel on YouTube called uh, Continuous Integration. And um, yeah, I just kind of learned more about it and like the science of it. And it seemed really cool. So yeah, I just, yeah, I love this. I love this idea. I love, I love the people here. So what, yeah. what was your coding bootcamp? Huh? Uh, it was Lighthouse Labs and it was about uh, web development. Keith brought me here. If if I sin, please don't blame him. Yeah, and Keith, you're doing something called Ripen too, right? It's like an internship yeah, program. That, yeah, that's over yeah. now. Oh, you did? Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. It's for like a month. All right. Well, it is twelve past the hour, so I will get started here. Um, anyone who didn't make it in, I hope they see the recording. Sorry, you didn't make it in. We'll work on it. Next next month will probably be Zoom, so it'll be a little easier. But anyway, we were starting soon. Let's start now. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Another edition of uh, SACPI. Uh, for first timers, the SAC means Sacramento. We were previously California based, uh, but uh, the pandemic pushed us online and we've expanded our base considerably. Uh, including our speaker for tonight it's april 7th 2022 i have no idea what number it is i think we started in 2017 february so just over the math is there five years 22 60 number 62 yes uh i'll hail our glorious founder josh miller he shows up from time to time i suspect that discord is far too much of a curveball for him to show up you showed up on some of the Zooms, so we'll get some links for that in the future. All right, the code of conduct we got we had some, some violations in fairly recent uh, uh, editions. So 
I brought it back. Our meetup group is dedicated to providing a harassment-free community experience for everyone, regardless of age, gender, sexual orientation, disability, physical appearance, body size, race, or religion, or lack thereof. We do not tolerate harassment of our community members in any form. Sexual language and imagery is not appropriate for any venue, including talks, workshops, parties, Twitter, and other online media, including Discord. Community members violating these rules may be sanctioned or expelled or just muted from the community at the discretion of the community organizers. Uh, so we are in a couple of channels. We've got a Slack channel. If you got your phone closed, feel free to whip it out and get some of them sweet QRs. These work a lot better in uh, the live presentation, but they still work just the same in these. Uh, Sack Tech hosts our SACPI channel. We also have a SACPI channel in my company Discord called Brazen Studios. Uh, we can put the link in the chat later. Everyone's welcome to join that has shown up tonight. Uh, but don't tell anyone, it's super secret. No, I don't care. Everyone's welcome. Uh, we don't advertise. We're there. Everyone's welcome, but we don't advertise. Uh, but SACPI, follow us on Twitter. We will follow you back. Um, I am still very, very terrified of subreddit. The Reddit that we have there is only, it only leads to Zoom bombing and other just general audio trolling. I, I still have yet to get a good use out of it. Um, but we got a Facebook group, we got a Facebook page. I post stuff on there, and, you know, uh, aging media. But I don't know, maybe it gets people in, who knows? Um, all right, so I know we were having some trouble with the, the video, but while we're not too worried about uh, audio, if everyone who's willing would please jump on your video and we're gonna do a quick Brady Bunch shot. Can I get a picture of it? Take a bunch of them. Yeah, if you have a bird or a funny hat, some sort of eyewear, I don't know, a beverage maybe, hold it up, taking a bunch of pics, awesome, all right, we got a few more people coming up, oh, hey, here we go, we got one more coming in, he's loading still, Bury Lim is coming, <laughs> awesome. Bird wins uh, by, by default. <laughs> oh yeah, Twinkles for the win, oh, there we go, hey, Bury, awesome, thank you so much, uh, we will, I will, Finally, I think synthesize the next uh, Brady Bunch photo there. Awesome. Awesome. All right. And so um, we're going to start off with uh, Dr. Tanim Islam from Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. He has uh, spoken with the group a number of times. Uh, he did a really cool tracker for COVID where he was scraping uh, data from, I, I don't know where you were getting the data from, but you were making it look pretty cool. Yeah, he's sent some other, oh no. How's it going on What's the video? Uh-oh, uh Tanim, you're, you're skipping on the, the audio. Or, uh oh. You might want to decrease your sensitivity. Yeah. Hey, uh, team, do you want to log out and back in again? I'll keep giving your intro, uh, but for now, it seems like you're a little choppy. But he's done some really cool things in the past. Uh, he showed us a, a thing called Sphinx that took comments from Python code and turned it into LaTeX, which is the standard format for scientific white papers. He's also done some things with like Plex servers and other interesting utilities like uh, some image processing stuff and I don't know, just generally comes up with really cool tools. So this time around, he's doing a thing with a thing called restructured text, I understand. And hopefully his connection is going to cooperate. I see him frozen in video form, <laughs> smiling at us. How about the, how about now? How's the uh, how's audio the is much paper? better. Audio yeah, is much so better. I'm good, just going to say, well, It'll behave how it'll behave, you know? <laughs> yeah. We're up against the universe right yeah, now. Everything else we'll blame on Sergey. 
Uh, but I will stop my screen share and hand it over to Tanim. All right. Hi, everybody. You saw Twinkles and you saw my screenshot. And that'll be that. Okay. I, uh, share my screen. Uh, let's do the... Let's try this out. Okay, let's make it 15, 30 frames per second. Will work? Right. Relax. What? Oh. Okay, watch. There we are. Can everybody hear me? Mm -hmm. Is there sort of something that tastes like synchronization for most people? Or is it... Uh, Tastes like parody. We can hear you. Yeah. Okay. It's good. I, I can see Jumbo. No, okay, that's I'm not going crazy. You guys said taste. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yep. A bunch of synesthetes in here. Did Did you hear taste? I heard taste. Wait. Yeah, what? I... That's not what I, what we said. Oh no. No, I'm just messing. Taste. I, I. Wait. I taste <laughs> the color of it. <laughs> so can you see the stream that I'm uh intro and outro for HTML emails with restructured text? I mean I see it. Yep. March 9th. Whoa. Tastes like time travel. Doesn't sound like it though. Tony, where did you go? I can see it. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you're presenting now, uh, Tom. Yeah, it looks good here. Uh, I, I'm sure most people here are used to like uh, Zoom meetings or uh, Microsoft Meetup meetings where only one person can present at a time. Um, yeah, if if that's easier, I'm willing to um, switch. But uh, if we can maybe just give this one more try. If not, we can create a Zoom meeting and go there. That's easier. Um, no, I, I think we should wait it out, and then I'll, yeah. uh, I know the like VP of product over there. I'll give him a hard time about that. <laughs> nice. Sometimes you need a rich, information dense, concise email. There you go. That's the intent is being able to see this. So this is ones where you've got code blocks, you've got images that you want formatted nicely, you've got LaTeX uh, and all this other crap in there. And so thing at a low level is a markup language called restructured text that takes that language and converts it into HTML. Well, you know, HTML is one way of sending emails, and uh, you don't, uh, so why not just leverage whatever capabilities there are? And I figure, okay. <laughs> Did we lose him again? I can't hear him. Either. All right. <laughs> this is super awesome, by the way. Oh, so. All right, that, next uh, page. <laughs> let me now share something else. Change the window. I'm going to now share everything, and hopefully things will not die. Okay, so let me go to live. Went away to infinity. Okay. So what do I mean by all this? Let me just uh, open up. I'm going to go old school right now. So does everybody see this Emacs window that I have on the top? The idea is you write your email text. Uh, you compile it because it's a markup language. The most common examples people see are uh, Markdown, for instance. And uh, LaTeX, that is. I can't, I can't hear. Is he saying something? 
Did he see? I, I can't hear anything. Does anyone else hear anything? Not on this. No, 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 Uh, we can hear Hanzo chaotic meeting we've had yet. The name, no. All right, does anyone have a like proper account? I think it's in the mic settings or something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why this would be such trouble to me. If you go to your mic settings, like your user settings, and then you go to voice and video. You might be able okay. to. Okay. Can... Also, Hello? have you considered yeah. closing? Like, you have like twenty applications closed. Yeah. Have you considered closing some of them? If you also uh, no. Uh, uh, um, yeah, go to voice activity. You see the uh, where the green check mark is right there, right beside uh, automatically determine your input sensitivity. Um, just tick that mm -hmm. off, and then put your voice activity to where you want it to be. No, like no, uh, no, no, that's putting it uh, higher to where it won't read your voice. So the more you put it to the left, the more it'll read your voice and anything else in your background. Yeah. Uh, try speaking, perhaps. Oh. Okay. Okay, we, I can hear you. Or. At least I can hear you. Anybody yep. else here, man? Yep. Those are those were really good instructions. You might want to turn it a little bit lower there. Yeah. <laughs> Should I put the right there is good. Just basically. Okay. This is a bit of combinatorial hell. All right. <laughs> Maybe this will work. All right. Step one, can everybody make file? This this file that says SACPI? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna go. Where are you getting this from? No, it's not good. RST, I'd imagine, is a restructured text file format. And so he's gonna make file, he's loading up three different RSTs, three of those Python scripts, looking at the white background like, like a maniac. Yeah, yeah, no, it's some sort of like well, I think a make file is typically kind of like a markdown style uh, file. No, it's just a, a compile script. Uh, uh here is restructure text. Hello, Woody. Um, it's got a lot of rich grammar to it. It does stuff like uh, substitutions of images and URLs and a lot of things. Put in LaTeX here, either inline in your block, or you could put it as you know a set of rows in your HTML. You can define, you know, basically make a table where you also do replacements of images. And you have some, you know, code blocks in here. So, for instance, I want to explain some complicated concept, one or all of these, and I don't want to spend, you know, 50 minutes to like two hours trying to, uh, you know, random ourselves to a college. So something like this, I've been using more and more as a way of. Bada bing, bada boom. This is, you know, really some kind of uh, thing I want to say in as rich, dense, and concise way as possible. Okay. So this might, if if you pe people, if any of you have not seen um, restructured text in action or Sphinx in action, this might be new to you. But uh, uh, suffice to say, at least in my experience, it's one of those uh, things that are that uh, since I've started developing documentation, since I, you know, a steep learning curve of restructured text. And then um, I kept at it, and now I'm able to make these HTML documents that uh, I, you know, 
principal uh, who I need to. So, okay, so now here's this, uh, you know, big screen here, uh, basically the shell, and I'm gonna just do a make deploy or make what satai, sorry. And uh, there are these two command line tools called my RST to HTML. This is the bit of, uh, well, it's straightforward as, as far as these things go. A Python tool that uses the uh, restructured text uh, module, which is part of, I think, I think it's part of baseline Python, or it might, if it's not part of baseline Python, it's well supported. That is, you can do a pip install of it, of a thing called docutils, and it will, you know, usually install without drama. And so this is just a thing that I've written to create my own command line interface to. Uh, to document to restructured text parser and reader. And uh, another tool it's called inline images, which is the thing that says, um, what's well, PML spec? You can both have, for images, you can have a URL to it, file or HTTP, right? But you can also have a base64 encoding, you know, just basically a long string to store these images inline into HTTP. And um, the idea is, well, you know, what if your external URL goes away? Uh, if you have something inline in there, I mean, that's the, you know, uh, that's that's the hope is that then you don't have to, you know, worry about ownership of resources elsewhere. Uh, it's just everything is in the HTML file. And uh, would you guys like to see a demonstration? Absolutely. Yes, please. Oh, please. All right. So I'm going to let's just let's see it. that. Let's see it. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. There it is. Everything that I showed in this markup, you know, language, this this thing written in a markup language is you know valid HTML. There's the inline LaTeX. There's that block over there. There is images in tabular form. And, you know, with an associated, you know, caption. Well, implicitly a caption, it's just a table. And here's examples of code blocks where, you know, I have to, for instance, this is kind of contrived, but, uh, these are things I, I do every so often too. Here's this code block representing, okay, this code has a bug or we need to fix this functionality. Well, you know, I could just put that thing in the email, then it becomes really clear to hopefully most people uh, what, uh, what I'm trying to say. And the final thing, HTML is nice, but you know, let me just uh, send something to you. Uh, and here you go. And I guess, uh, Woody, do you see, did you get this thing called test email just recently? Well, I got one from earlier. Uh, you got yesterday. One. Did you send I it to SACPI or did you send it to? Should I send Oops, it there to we go. Email? Test email? Right here, I'll I... pull it up real quick. Yeah, I can. Uh, you know, unshare my go. screen. Uh, you know, you don't have to unshare. It's unlike uh, Zoom. If people want to see my screen, they can look at my share. There oh. it is. This is a test oh, email where I demonstrate restructured text to write out rich emails. Yeah, this is the most intense, like, per my last email, please review this white paper. <laughs> exactly. I have to do stuff like this because Honestly, I have I'm the less patient the older I get. And so, you know, I, I know I no longer have the patience to like play a game called let's talk for an hour and a half to try to figure out what we're both trying to say. I'm just like, right. so, you know what? Here's this email with a lot of inform clear information, nicely organized, and uh, you know. 
that's the thing we speak to. And a, an interesting thing, too, is it's HTML. That's what I copied and pasted and sent. I found it also works with MS Teams, like a Teams thread, either on a, a channel or, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, like, you know, or a few groups in a kind of conference room, is it can, you know, consume that HTML pretty well. And I'm able to do basically the same level of detail and structure with a lot of my MS Teams communication as I can with email. And uh, wow, that's cool. That's it. Is that Any is that because they, did they, is that because of how MS Teams handles uh, like HTML and email or did they design so. restructured yeah, text? I think it's a pretty good parser. Uh, let me just stop it right now. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a long and short of it. Uh, there's no um, actual, I should say, there's no actual GitHub page or even a GIST for the command line tools I just demonstrated here. Or and there's no GIST with the, you know a demonstration restructured text file. So, but. Uh, all the tooling that I demonstrated here lives at a lower level in GitHub re repositories that I, that I have right now and that I use all the time. It seems kind of like um, uh, MDX um, or Markdown plus JSX a little bit. But you bring up a good point. The issue with Markdown is... They're the big ones like GitHub or GitLab and uh, oh, no. you bring in Markdown. The vanilla Markdown doesn't have a specification for um, for LaTeX. There's stuff like a, you can even call it Jupyter Hub Markdown, which you know re, um, recognizes LaTeX. You know, basically syntax that I showed here. The nice thing about restructured text is it's a much tighter specification. There's one restructured text uh, specification rather than a, a plethora of different markdown specifications, which is why I decided to you know use restructured text instead of markdown. Although I've seen in the wild some similar technologies with markdown. Yeah, it does seem like a lot, a lot less uh, bloated in terms of like what you'd have to write to get the same thing in Markdown and the idea that it's like just um, uh, really tight um, and it's already one already it's really tight. Yeah. <laughs> and really I developed this because, uh, or, you know, I think I developed the expertise because I just kept writing documentation and kept writing documentation. And uh, yeah, there's there's ways to even enhance it. Like uh, you can add in plugins, uh, you know, basically restructured text plugins to do, say, YouTube, you know, clips in your email or MP4 files, although that's probably HTML5. No, oh, but, you know, other plugins to do you know smarter sort of uh, substitutions? Define your own directives by substitutions. Basically, plugins to take you know the restructured text markup and convert it into the HTML you want. Uh, I'm not expert enough to figure out how to do that. And although maybe someday, if I have a few million dollars, I can probably pay for some high school student to, uh, you know, basically create a nice set of restructured text plugins that I would definitely be using. <laughs> I, I nominate Keith. <laughs> that implies, though, that I have money to, you know, money to share. <laughs> oh, bummer. All right, later then. Yeah, that's one All of those right. later I podcasts. How, how do we get Elon to implement this at Twitter now? Oh, and oh no. Did you lose her? Hello? 
<laughs> All right. Uh, I think Tanine may have uh, dropped out there. Uh, Tanine, are you still there with us? Yeah, we're here. Okay. Well, you guys are here, but is Tanine is the real question? Oh no, he's full gone. Oh, he restarted. Hello. Hello. Can you hear Ooh, me? He's got green ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we can hear you. Sweet and stuff. okay. So I I, I want to end with one thing. Because there's, of course, obvious improvements I could make. I could hook it up to some kind of, you know, uh, SMTP server or SMTP client. But uh, it sort of kind of works now. And I want, to sp I want to emphasize all the work I do, either professionally or hobby-wise, is just a form of shame reduction. All right. Just this. This is. I'm gonna start playing this. Clip. You feel so full of. What's the opposite of shame? Pride. No, not that far from shame. Less shame. Yeah. That's uh, I think the healthiest attitude <laughs> to have. Less shame, not pride. Just less shame. That's definitely what I go for with these uh with these events. It's uh you know. We're not trying to go for perfect polish here. We're more like, We're more like what is it, inner inner dimensional cable? Got like a looser feel to it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, hey, uh, you guys can hear me eventually. You guys can see the stream eventually. So count that as <laughs> Yeah, partial win. A less shameful win. It's less <laughs> shameful. Exactly. Yes. How would you get that's, that's the, really cool? Uh, how do you get thank Python? you for sharing that with us. Uh, I, I'm curious, does anyone have any questions or any? Uh, I heard it. Uh, Oops, that's hear it. With, oh, yeah, it's my good. Um, how, you, how would you get um, Python to make the RST? Like, I, I don't want to send out these emails, like, it's something that triggers the email, but it's I think it's you may dynamically be so able to send out the email with your like today's date, but it's like a hey, you know. Such and such is off, or you know, outage, or something like that. Um, actually, uh, the solution I would use is you'd use J template, you know, some restructured tech, and I could demonstrate yeah. some blog code that does some Jinja templating in there to create restructured text. Uh, that's how I would do it, and then you parse that with you know docutils. At a uh, you know high level to create your HTML, and let me see if you guys have. Yeah, because it like if you want to change like it's a standard message and it changes like the date and or something like that or you know. It's just dynamic. Only yeah. like a couple pieces of it are dynamic. You would have like you know scenario one. I think that your audio is cutting out quite a bit. Uh, it's not cutting out for me. I can hear it. Oh, is it not? Okay, maybe it's just me. All right, maybe it's just me. Right. Disregard. Uh, no, that's fine. That was only I mean, question. This is a, <laughs> that was only this one. This is a fairly shameful shit show, so, you know, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> 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 Let me see yep. if I can uh, give you an example. Uh, well, software sources, Pelican. So I have a blog that's written in the, I guess, the tin is one of those Pythonic ways of writing a blog with restructured text. Uh, let me see if I have some, some examples where I have used Jinja, for instance. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna share something, hopefully it works. Um, are you guys feeling brave? <laughs> That's my secret, yeah, I'm never least... feeling brave. All right, <laughs> I'm, let's go I'm always again. angry. <laughs> Let's go back to which stupid, uh, you know, I'm going to share the whole screen and it's going to 15 frames per second. So this thing in the front, do you see it? This thing called Flex Server Running Update. It uses, uh, you know, uh, an, another Python templating module called Jinja. And so there's these Jinja grammar. Questions, uh, date. You could do, you know, 
basically uh, variable substitutions, things like that, and other kinds of substitutions uh, that I'm demon. I mean, this is just like block code, I guess, at this point, but it's supposed to a blog page that uh, that I then deploy to GitLab to a GitLab page so that you know the whole world can see it. Um, question: uh, How do you spell ginger by chance? J I N J A. Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, and I'll give you an example of uh, what it is. Well, so let's see, Lex server running update. So that email that's then run through a template engine to do substitutions, creates HTML, then is deployed is this thing here. You know, all this crap, basically. And it's something that's there's a cron job that well, is it cron or system system d unit that's run every uh run every day uh, every 20 person it just updates it another one maybe a little more useful is this covid 19 running update which has you know a bunch of mp4 files as well as image you know, in various aggl regional agglomerations in the U.S. Like here's, uh, you know, it's U.S. I'm just showing showing that graph. It looks like we're past the hump and the rate's going down. And uh, I think for one of the things I did a long time ago, like over a year ago, it was uh, I wrote something up for SACPY, you know, for one of the earlier demonstrations of this functionality, and also have Sacramento, the Sacramento metro area in here too. But uh, yep, that's uh, that's sort of some of the crap that I do right now. Or, you know, I, I've decided, you know, a lot of this tooling just seems to work and I don't want to spend time to improve it unless people pay me. <laughs> yeah, that's my general. That was super cool. I checked out that whole thing. Yeah, you told me ginger before, and I forgot. Yeah. What was that? You had mentioned ginger before, and I forgot. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, because I think I <laughs> oh yeah, it's the same question. Yeah. The documentation, my documentation, are just this examples. seems really similar. The Sphinx looks I'm sorry, very I was professional just gonna say, this too. seems really similar like, to Jekyll as far as a uh, templating language. Jekyll or EJS. Yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about that. I, I've heard of Jekyll, and I know GitHub pages by default um, is going to be Jekyll, but you could make it into a static uh, GitHub page by putting a dot no Jekyll, you know, empty file in the top of your repo, and it'll it'll say okay it's just a github page and uh uh yeah i mean there's a lot of examples that i've a fair enough i to say a lot but like uh the uh my big projects on github have their own github pages associated with them i mean basic github pages are is is where the sphinx documentation lives Very cool. Well, uh, all right. Any other questions for Tanim? Tanim, that's pretty awesome. I kind of want to send some like overly detailed emails to people. Sure. No. <laughs> I, yeah, you I should uh, expect to reply that way too. <laughs> I have a I have a question. Um, so, uh, I I guess. I, I kind of want to understand, like, how, how do people kind of react to these uh, emails? Um, you know, that... it's, they tended to like it. They're not going to write similar detailed emails, but it's mostly so I don't go insane. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's so I don't have the, okay, what were you trying to say? You know, basically stream of communication. 
Or if it was Enterprise, you would have like branding or something like that oh. mixed in there. Yeah, like standardized for the company's font and colors. I guess you could. There's probably ways to, you know, you know, add that information in there into the tooling. I I just don't know enough HTML and CSS to low level that stuff, you know, into into it. For instance, the um, code, uh, you know, highlighting it uses pigments under the hood, uh, and there's a possible there's probably a way to change the you know the color color scheme in pigments by some command or, you know, changing my command line tool to do that. But, you know, I haven't done it. So, yeah, there's probably some functionality to do, you know, basically improve the HTML, I should say, beyond sort of this vanilla, relatively vanilla CSS plus HTML that, you know, uh, DocuTools does to convert the restructured text to HTML because things right you see these sphinx pages they look really nice they've got nice color schemes and layouts but this is the lowest of the low level stuff or you know the vanilla vanilla est of the vanilla in terms of rst to html yeah the sphinx definitely looks more snappy like a nobody knows what's going it just blends in kind of yeah yeah it's you it's you know it's basically parsing a tree that's what it what's really happens underneath the hood but you know i i have there's really it's one of the ironies the documentation is one of those things nobody even knows how to do not even the people who make documentation solutions can document how their tools work very well so what can i say <laughs> So, so I want to ask something really elementary. It's yeah, sure. a little bit about Gmail. So I have some uh, Python scripts that I use, and I email through Gmail. Uh -huh. And Google Google's told me now I use a simple just a username and a password. But Google is yeah. not going to let Google is not going to let me do that much longer. So what's what's some good alternatives? I there are several solutions. I have some stuff that uses Google's Gmail's OAuth two, you know, authentication on their, you know, basically Gmail service. Uh, dude, what could I do? I, I, you know, I think uh, one of them is you have to basically have your own SMTP client on your machine. You know, opens up port twenty five and sends it off to um, send. Set up, you know, some credentialing to do that. Basically, allows an SMTP client to send to Gmail directly. I have a blog post about that. Let me see if I can find it. And where should I send the uh, SMTP? I mean, the link to it. it. It's sort of Python code to send email locally. Uh, is there like a a text chat where I can put that information? Maybe uh, anybody. Do the hosts have an idea so I can put that info in there somewhere? Yeah, you can put it in. There's just a, a channel called chat. I think that would be a pretty good spot. Okay, let me just put that. Uh, so here's the link on um, Python code to send email locally. And the big part is how to set it up on your you know, local home server to actually uh, use, you know, relay it. Your home server. Mm -hmm. Your home server is a relay client that you know basically allows you to move use Gmail's SMTP you know server to do all the email sending. And uh, let me see if I have some documentation on how to do it. You know using Gmail's uh, OAuth authentication, and it's going to be I have that code in or this. Sphinx documentation in a while, so maybe it it exists somewhere. Howdy services, tell me email API. It's probably one of this configure it howdy config service email API. Uh, you know, let so, me see. So, uh, so this this could be simply done with a Raspberry Pi. I I actually have a way out in a in a. Uh, 
far field that doesn't have much internet connection. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, if you're Raspberry Pi, you can SSH into it. That's the easiest way to, you know, set set it up. And, you know, set up an SMTP. I don't think you even just, just need the client functionality. It'll just pop out, you know, through Python using the SMTP protocol going to Gmail. This uses the... Yes, that's what I currently that's what I currently use, but it doesn't have the two step authentic authentication that I think they demand now. Yeah, I have no idea how that thing really works. And yeah, so how how do you? I thought you'd save an environmental variable so you don't have your password in plain text, right? Right. Because I have I have some APIs set for those where you can just all kinds yeah. of stuff you can so log into the way you the Gmail. Manually too. I never use the Gmail because I have a personal email. Yeah, so, so I don't use Gmail. Uh, if if I can if I can interrupt, I, I I've had to use this for for some business purposes, right? And, and the trick the trick with Gmail or any or the trick with Gmail or any type of Google service is that uh, is that you is that um, they want you to use a token, right? So you yeah. go. You go, uh, you go into your uh, Google account, and you create a token to use for Gmail, and then that's what you pass uh, as, I think, a password. Okay. Yeah, that's your session. That's the key to actually, you know, have the right permissions to use the right service. And you know, I think I, I don't know how I had the patience to write this documentation. Like, I think there's at least a necessary bit of information to get stuff working. And my God, why the hell did I do this? Uh, I think maybe to help myself, but uh, yeah, there's all this stupid crap, you know, summary of setting up Gmail, Google credentials. Ah. Oh, it's horrifying, I should say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so there's, so there's yeah, a few... There's a few sources for that information. There's a there's a site called Real Python that has a few that has articles on such things. And those are they're usually pretty good. They're usually pretty good. Okay. okay, maybe they will. I mean, I had something that I got working, and uh, you know, I've chosen to store the the, the uh, credentials not in my, but in uh, in an external database, a SQLite database, and so. That stuff, you know, exists on disks and it's backed up in some other places. And so that's that's the thing that, you know, makes all this magic work. Uh, a, a tool, a Google service I use a lot is, uh, you know, you know, there's a song I heard on Shazam, you know, or I Shazammed it. And I have a command line tool that gets the clip from YouTube and the metadata from a metadata, music metadata server called music brains all in python huh. and um yeah it's uh i love it i use it all the time maybe too much sometimes i go over quota and i have to wait a day before i can start getting new music okay no i think i think now if if, if it's using token it's similar to what i use on when i did the telegram if you remember my telegram presentation we'd use tokens yeah, yeah. too so, because otherwise I was just going to convert everything over to token, uh, a telegram. Yeah. But I'll I'll go in and and look at real uh, Python and also uh, your GitHub. So thanks for the help. Appreciate it. It's a little more clear sure. to me now. So, All right. Uh, well, my audio is it breaking up for lots of people or? Ironically, that came through just fine. Yes, uh, it's uh, I have Comcast, so you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I yeah, mean, you should hear me at work sometimes. Some meetings, I'm like. <laughs> You, you all are failing in these ways. Uh, and it ends with, so when are you going to fix the things I've listed that, that are failing? And it comes <laughs> <in> the <hard> time. <laughs> so 
I totally get it. I totally get it. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, once again, I always appreciate your contributions to SACPI. Uh, I will take over from here with a quick update on my end. Um, uh, as I've said, I'm Primatic, uh, but also my real name is Woody Hooden. Uh, I run a company called Brazen Studios, who donates uh, time and resources to this monthly event called SACPI. Um, and I like to give a quick update uh, every quarter or so, just with what I'm generally doing. This time, it's two-parter. Uh, I'm currently in a place called Chicks Beach, um, abbreviated to CXB from time to time. Um, it's in Virginia Beach, uh, Virginia. I'm out here. I'm working in Outlier Studio right now, which is in a hilarious state of disarray um, in the Bunny Boiler Boys uh, house. They are the new hosts of the Outlier Studio. And, you know, we're, we're getting on, on the whole recording uh, kick again. They did a whole bunch last year, and uh, they're looking to get some momentum again this year. But just a quick shout out to Outlier Studio and uh, Bunny Boiler Boys uh, for letting me host and, and uh, forward tonight. Um, the real thing I wanted to update on uh, is coming up the end of this month. I'm working on this thing called a pub public safety answering point, and I'm hoping to enter the architecture I've been working on for the last year or so into the UN's uh, World Innovation Day hack coming up. Um, I'm, I'm currently based at Salesforce and working on the Slack acquisition. I've got a, a person or two from the Slack team who is looking to uh, help me out with this. Um, Previously, we had entered this uh, with a MIT incubator called Unbundle Policing. Um, it's now an accelerator. We didn't get moved on due to uh, various reasons, but uh, they have still maintained interest in that. So if you are interested in joining up for a hackathon, let me know afterwards. Um, but yeah, that'll be at the end of the month and we're making a call on whether or not we're going to enter that. Um, but yeah, just want to do a real quick update, trying to act like it's uh, some sort of quarterly update thing. Uh, but before we close out tonight, I want to open the floor to anyone who's interested in, um, you know, talking a little bit about what they're doing. Um, but once again, thanks to Tanim uh, for for his presentation and thanks to everyone for all the great questions. Uh, it's really fun being in a group of coders like this and getting a lot of interesting, incisive questions. Uh, if you guys want to speak in the future, we run these every month. That's the first Thursday of every month. Uh, I think next month is likely to be on Zoom because that has been the least uh, technical difficulties for us. But it's been fun. Uh, and what, thanks again to uh, Shell and Spacetime for hosting us here on their Discord server. It was fun to see some new faces, hear some new voices, get some new new perspective on you know just what we're working on. But if you'd like to speak, uh, well, you know you can find us on here on Brazen Studios. You can find us on Twitter, all the rest of those ones too. Uh, but also you can fill out that form, and I might even see your submission. I don't know if anyone's filled it out yet, but hey, you know, they say if you build it, they will come. They don't say when they'll come, but you know, whatever. Um, we've got a mailing list, kind of. Basically, sign up and we might email you or add you to an well, event or something. Yeah, but uh, if anyone's got any announcements they'd like to uh, put forth, now's a good time. Um, yeah. Other than that, uh, we got nothing. Um, see you on the internet. See you in a month. Or no? Is that... Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, I'll be in touch with the chaos and Micah. Oh, because I, I just applied for uh, applied for a salary, but I was looking at grants with the yeah, UN uh, too, yeah. recently. Uh, if you'd like to talk about what you're building, well, that'd be awesome. Oh, and I'm over at Isla White, so I'll be in touch with you soon. On the code All right, thing. perfect. Yeah. Thanks for showing up, Mike. Yeah. All uh, right, Keith, what do you got for us? Yeah, so uh, 
basically what I've been working on, I worked on it over the weekend. Um, it's, I, I kind of just, I wondered, hey, like, your resume is, like, annoying to update and change. And I was thinking, like, is there a way that people have already, like, figured out how to render resumes in kind of like a computerized format that you can just programmatically change themes or stuff. And then I figured out that I just searched for like, I don't know, can you represent your resumes like JSON? And it turns out there was this whole organization that does that. Um, so basically over the weekend, I kind of spent um, time uh, creating like shell scripts that uh, use the themes that they've created on jsonresume.org and just to just like generate them and then like change my change my json resume is really cool um and i i kind of like the idea of using this for a lot of other things um kind of just like it seems like scheme and then i got into like looking at uh schema.org which is i think a standard well it's like it's like google and a whole bunch of other people's standard for creating um uh json representations of a lot of different objects and so the idea is um to kind of use this to make make like website theming a little bit easier uh for for myself and for i think like anybody who kind of wants to make a personal portfolio and so like a portfolio website theming with um with like a back end server that you can just make requests to and get like uh html documents from seems kind of seems like really cool to me so that's that's kind of what i've been working on that's awesome. Uh, do you have any example of that that you can share, or is it, it kind of like actually, still coming yeah, together? So I actually, have my resume. My resume is hosted on Vercel. And, um, I use it. Let me see if I can just share my screen because I have currently. I have my. Uh, let's just share. Currently, I have. Um, if I go to deployments. Like, yeah, deployments, and I just go to this one. Oh, no, that's my code. I'll just go here. So this is the current, um, this is what I currently have in production, right? Um, but I can actually pretty easily that change. Looks great. Uh, is it working? Oh, so this yeah, is what I currently it, have it, in no. production. And um, what I can do is if I go to my uh, resume um, in my VS Code, I can, I have a bunch of, in my publics folder, I have a bunch of um, basically just uh, HTML documents that are rendered based on the theme that exists. And I did this using some pretty simple shell scripting that just um, uses this uh, CLI tool called uh, uh, resume, JSON Resume. Um, and what that CLI tool does is it essentially allows you to export your JSON resume, which is in this kind of format, it just kind of looks like this, as um, like, as, like uh, as an HTML document that's kind of already structured and somebody already did the work of theming. Um, and of course you can create your own themes and then upload those as, uh, MPN packages. Uh, so the idea is to take this one more step further and have, um, a, uh, something like a portfolio, um, JSON, um, that you can, uh, that you can use and create these, uh, scripts and then have that portfolio JSON essentially render instead of just like a static HTML file. Um, so if I was to show you how like changing a theme works, fine. Yeah, Git Bash is working. So what directory I'm in, let's go back to 
yeah, wait, cd into the source file. Okay, no, I'm in the source file. I think I, let me, let me just check. Yeah, okay. Wait, no, I'm not. Yeah, let me cd again and do, okay, now I'm in the source file. Now that I'm in the source file, I can basically set the theme with the bash, dash, dash, scripts. or set underscore theme dot sh and i need to pass it in the theme that i want to change it to um i forgot some theme names so let's see let's look at some theme names so let's try caffeine um, and let's make sure my set theme script because i did add something yeah so let's try this. Oh, yeah. I, must I think you just want one dot instead of two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, so yeah, that worked. And I'll just, I did make some changes, but I'll just push these to production. Um, so it's just like, um, we're just say it can commit, dash M, changes. Yes, this is bad commit, don't do this, but okay, that's what I did. I'm just going to get push. And so now I've basically, because I use git, um, git to like store my change in something. When I, when I go, this is the wrong, like I should have went to the variable one. When I go to, let's go to this one. Let's go to overview. Yeah. So this is the one that always changes. I think this will, yeah, as you can see, different theme, right? um than the one before uh you can also look at uh because it tracks my changes because it's just git right um i can go in the past and we could look at uh what my site used to look like in the past and what my theme used to look like in the past let's see maybe it's here no wait um let's see what did this site look like yeah, so this is what my resume used to look like with a different theme. This one's called the elegant theme. And as you see, it looks like this. So like um, the idea is to kind of make these shell scripts uh, like a little bit easier to run and just like maybe, make, yeah, make them like simpler and something that you can do on startup. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I worked on over last weekend. And I'm kind of just making a little bit of minor changes here and there. That's, yeah, that's what I've been doing. That's really slick, man. Good work. Yeah, that's really cool. Love that. This is where your uh, your grep command was coming in, huh? Yeah, that's where my grep... My grep command was to store the theme in uh, a separate file so that when I move that file, it moves it to, into a directory called, like, old, uh, old uh, themes. Um... So the, the set theme changes the index HTML file and moves the that HTML file into the old builds folder. Um, and the old, that theme style is changed programmatically. So the name of the file is changed based on the grep command that was found in that file. So yeah, so it's changed to like old JSON resume um, slug or like, uh, whatever that theme was. So yeah, that's what I, yeah, that's what I have. Nice. Okay. Anyone else? How, how does anyone, yeah, how does anyone follow that up? But, <laughs> you don't, you just, uh, you just wait till next week when everyone's minds are fresh again. Uh, I think that's probably a good call. Well, awesome. Thanks for that share, Keith. That's amazing. I um, hope that gets you hired like stupid fast. Uh, it should. Um, Thanks. But... I, I hope it does. Yeah. I don't know if it will, but hope it does. <laughs> it's, a, it's a solution to a problem. Definitely. Yeah. And a slick solution, too, because that was a pretty rapid cycling through a whole bunch of themes. So really cool, man.
Hey, well, all right, let's uh, let's wrap this thing up. Uh, I think this is another. It, it smoothed out by the end. It definitely started a little bumpy there. Tanim, I'm sorry for what this may or may not have done to your sanity, but I appreciate you sticking it through and uh, continuing on with your presentation because that was some really cool stuff that you showed us. And uh, once again, thanks for presenting. Yeah, thanks, Tanim. Right. That was he really cool. I'm gonna kind of restructured text format looks pretty sick and it's it it looks like it like a lot of things i would want to do with uh markdown are kind of already built in especially that that lad tech um uh parser seems like really sweet so thanks all right and thanks thanks for uh everyone for showing up and keith thanks for your little show and tell there at the end that was amazing but uh, without further ado, we might as well wrap this thing up. Thanks again, everyone. Uh, see you guys in a month and probably somewhere in between. See you right. soon. Have a great see night. See you guys. Bye. Thanks for the presentation. Later, Have folks. Right. Thanks. See you, everyone.